Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. You know, I woke up uh, a little early this morning, uh, got a good night's sleep, and uh, was, you know, if it's Friday, feeling pretty good about the sure. world, feeling pretty uh, upbeat. And uh, and then uh, a little later on, my, my wife comes out, and uh, you know how you know, right? All married men know this. You know how you know it's just not quite right. You know yeah. how you know it's just not... <laughs> Where off. it should be, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, half a, in the we used to say just like a half a bubble off if you're like we're using half a level. A bubble off, yeah. And, uh, and so, well, what I get is uh, sometimes I, you know, I'll get the good morning and uh, <laughs> that type of thing, or I'll get the, you know, bye bye, or instant conversation, like where yeah. something is discussed or whatever. And uh, you can tell, or, or then you get the silence. So I'm getting the silence this morning, Ooh. and it's, uh, and I've been up for about a half an hour. She gets up at 6 a.m. I, I got up at 5.30. And I'm going through uh, show prep, and I'm going through some uh, news items, and I'm just sitting there quietly in my skivvies on the uh, – and then I hear Russell, 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 and uh, she's doing stuff. And uh, and then at that point, um, I say, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. Right? That was my crime. That was my <laughs> crime no. this morning. <laughs> Is everything okay? Mm. That was my comment. Did she have a bad night with the video game? No, the comment was. Uh, <laughs> the comment was. Uh -oh. <laughs> but there was that. Sure. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Don't open it. Don't open it. Well, it's the only way I can lower the settings. Don't open it. Uh, so anyway, I uh, get to. No, just doing what I always do. Taking out the trash, getting Michael up, getting Michael ready. Mm. You can make your own tea this morning. Mm. Uh, it, mm. was, uh, it was, it yeah. was, uh, you know, the whole thing. And uh, you know, I realize that, uh, like we all do, sometimes our regular tasks, our regular, you know, things that we do, right, yeah, are a pain in the ass. And sometimes <laughs> you get you get fed up, you know. Yeah. So uh, yep. then we have a little skirmish. And I and I'm like, well, I'm just talking to you, you know. I say and, and, a dust and then, up. And we had a little dust up. You yeah, know, and I might have used there. There might have been language. Oh uh, my, you know. Then then I won't ask how you are. You know, piss off. <laughs> I think that was. Really Did you ever you know, say? Weird. Do you think I want to do the podcast with those jerks? <laughs> I wish. See, maybe I should, but I'd be lying because yeah, my job that but, I do is pleasant. But Mike, I actually we can't enjoy tell them we're happy. Right. I mean, well, how about this? I don't say this? that. I, I can. I, you I can. don't. I don't say yes. that regularly. I, I do. I toil along, and it's work getting up early and getting this stuff, stuff done. Everybody I was does looking it, for though. a kicker sure. today, and I'm I was on looking Team for O'Mara. I was looking for a kicker, so uh, that's how my day kind of went. Carla, south, and it's been look, south ever since. I know then, you think it looks like he has an easy life. Yeah, like he he does the show and then goes and golfs, and but no, heavy lies the crown. Exactly. Like he literally has to think about this show 24 hours a day. No, I'll let me entertain. explain what, what, what the Bolivian uh, conjurer is doing right there. What he's saying to me, really, I know it sounds like he has a good, where Oscar, uh, you know, is m reminds me in a veiled way all the time that my responsibilities end when the microphones turn off. Not he true. He really likes to say Not it true. when he's off. But, but he says to me that, you know, I know he's got a charmed, wonderful life where he finishes the show and he goes golfing, which is true. I just you've don't like that. But even, when he, but even when he you. golfs, Oscar, even yeah. when he golfs, there are You're tea lying. times. No, I are, believe that. Which is the same as right, a deadline. Good. He has to excel on the course. I, he has to, you know, and again, Shut no off switch. Two. I don't, I don't, have, switch. I don't have this. I don't want to touch either one of you. I don't have this chip of jealousy. You guys know this. I am happy when, when great, great things happen to good people. And even when it's not good people. Well, this look, doesn't count as yeah. a great thing happening. No, I'm this, telling you. but my, This counts as me, you know, while but, you're going to slog off to ESPN or do you, one of your you've, 50 other you've jobs. You've got it. But no, but Mike, I'm I'm cutting my teeth. You that already, burn's gotten a lot a little lighter, though. You already uh, anyway, you, you have yeah. already done this in your life. Mm -hmm. Like I just wish I had been there, Oscar. I wish I Let me talk for a second, please. <laughs> okay. Mike. 
What were you doing when you were 42 years old? Uh, radio show. Every day. And run, running a restaurant. For, for, ran running a restaurant, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're 61. Like, I'm 42. I That's why I have, like, five jobs. You had, what, two, mm-hmm. three jobs back then. I, I, that's that's the lens I that's the lens I look at through. Like I'm, I'm like right, this man right. grinded before. Okay. Now Carl has got to see it through my lens as well. Well, Carl is just starting. Yes. Yeah. But Carl Carl has been busting her ass on her website and uh, and slogging into her. Agreed. New, Agreed. Uh, new, to be new, fair, new, what were you doing when you were nineteen? <laughs> Let's bring on the talking head. Oh, is it time? <laughs> All right. Done talking. We about tried to help. Problems. Yeah, we did. Uh, this is our talking head this week, Nick Loader, the singing pilot. Wow. Is that like, does he do birthdays or something like that? What's Read the... on and you shall see. Nick has been listening to us since 1998. That's 22 years. Yes. Wow. He found us through his father on WPEK in Greenville, South Carolina. I remember that affiliate. Uh, he has been married. Uh, I wouldn't know the call letters, but I remember we were yeah. on in Greenville. He has been married for uh, three years to a lady named Whitney. <laughs> Oh, and I, I will always love you. Um, his son Mason, 14 months, a new dad. Wow. Yeah. Is right. very strong. Don't do that to you. He your said son it. He said 14 it. 14 months. <laughs> they live in Charlotte, North Carolina, an exploding mecca of commerce. Yes. Uh, perhaps you remember Nick as the lead singer of Gum Fiction. I do. Uh, the 90s cover band that opened for the TMOS live show at the House of Blues. What a great gig. Was good one, one of my favorite all-time experiences was that town. It was uh, his funnest gig ever. Uh, his actual job is in aviation. He plans and designs airports, wow. runways, and things like that. He's also a flight instructor and a single-engine commercial pilot. Uh, that means he's... Hey, he's in that hinky stuff. He's a single engine coming no, down. He probably uh, runs a lot of drugs. Favorite TMOS thing? <laughs> uh, Mike's Floyd Lawson impression. I love it when someone uses <laughs> Floyd's last name. Man, Lawson's man. last name. Ooh, yeah, get that. Uh, nostalgia Corner and Oscar's Take. His wife, oh, we have Oscar's Take Ooh, today. You're the one. Oscar's Take. Oscar's his take. wife also adores Oscar's Take. Huh, Oscar's uh, Take. He and his wife watch Jeopardy competitively. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> uh, I'll tell him my trick, but his wife, if his wife is playing Jeopardy competitively, uh, Nick, you, you'll, she'll probably guess what I'm, what you're doing. His <laughs> band, recently gigless, has an upcoming booking at a South Carolina RV resort. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> One time at a Key West bed and breakfast, he happened upon a clothing <laughs> optional pool. Oh, I love our talking heads. He, uh, we, we jo- he joins us now, Nick Loader, the singing pilot. Yeah. Nick, Nick, welcome. Howdy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Great to have you on the show. I God, where do I begin? Great to be here. I have to ask you. Uh, you know, you're you're a new dad, and uh, how's that working out for you? We've all been there, except it, for Oscar. It's amazing. It's the best thing ever. I tell you what, actually, we are, we're down at my parents right now, and he's uh, getting some quality time with uh, Granby and and Gammy. So he's he's happy as a lark. I think he likes them more than us. I think that's what I've learned the most <laughs> as a dad. But, and we don't do... matter as much. We're just the parents. No. All right. So you are you're at your uh your, your wife's parents or your parents? Uh, my, it's my boyhood home. Yes. All right, your boyhood, home. and I'm looking now, and I'm going to try to guess. So. It's not Florida. I can tell by, or I could be wrong. Your boyhood home. You live yes. in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I do. And you said you've traveled south to visit them. Correct. I all right. So I'm going to narrow it down just by the the geography. That I have I'm a guess back as here. well. It is okay. right, It is still. It is still in the south. Obviously. Yes. It is not in Florida. We've established that. I'm going to go with. Georgia. Oscar, would you like to go? Yes, please, before he says yes or no. Uh, right. it, it, can I see that uh, background one more time, please? It's a great video. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I see, uh, you know, I think the, the true giveaway, Mike, is there's just a ton of natural light. Uh, Cuba. Havana. <laughs> Cuba. Guantanamo, how did you know? <laughs> Rob said New Hampshire. It's how'd I do? Rob. New Hampshire. What? He's gone. Where, where are you uh, right now, Nick? I, I'm in the upstate of South Carolina. North Ooh. Korea. Oh, so you didn't. Okay. Not much of a drive. Not much of nah, a drive for nah. you, right? In cop country. Quick drive. Uh, 
Will you be doing the uh, family uh, Thanksgiving? Are you there for an extended period of time? Just for the weekend, my wife and I are actually uh, taking a trip up to Asheville tomorrow, and uh, the little guy is staying with the, with my parents. So uh, this is our, our first night away together without little man. So it's going to oh, be we'll oh, crazy. Wow. God, yeah, man. I tell you, if I had the money to live in Asheville in a really nice golf community, I would tell my family to go scratch up in Maine. I a would. lot of times I you say that anyway, though, though, Mike. Uh, what? <laughs> you say that a lot of times anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'd really do it. I'd be like, hey, I'll see you, I'll see you in six years. I'll do it a week. <laughs> Uh, that's all right, that's but not enough about me. There, Back yeah. to you. Uh -huh. uh, so your band uh, performed uh, at the House of Blues. That was a, if I remember and refresh my memory, Nick, that was a pretty competitive little deal as far as getting people to perform for us, right? Didn't we do a competition? Yeah, we did we a did. contest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, did. Yeah. we considered the House of Blues we did. a very cherry uh, music venue. And, uh, we we beat out Aerosmith, right. Uh, that, that, <laughs> <laughs> that, was really, that was really a phenomenal experience for us to do the show and i imagine playing in that room that's seen so many great artists that had to be a lot of fun uh, absolutely we, we play a lot of shows at places that are and i call that a, a legitimate uh music establishment you know we, we we play several shows you know of places like that but that was unmatched to see backstage you know we've got pictures of it all the uh all the uh, the names of the bands that have played there over the years right. it, going back 40 50 it's, it's incredible didn't and, they have uh, they, they had they would sign the wall right am i thinking of the right yeah. venue yeah so That's they were the famous aerosmith right yeah. wasn't aerosmith mm. on the wall yeah there there was mm. it's legitimate yeah. Yeah, actual musical acts Hell i don't yeah. consider us a musical act we're a cover band but these are actual <laughs> musical acts it's so much fun uh so your day job obviously which has taken priority uh, with the COVID, because I mean, playing gigs is uh, super tough, and God, do we all mm, pine for the it. time? Yes, uh, you know, I'll put a request in. I'll put a request in if we do another uh, live show somewhere. I'm putting a request in for you guys again. Yeah, I'd love to have you. Please I'd do. love it. Right to the top. It, yeah, it was that much Anytime. fun. Uh, a, the commercial Same money. Pilot. Here's what. <laughs> the, now, this is the way my sick mind, uh, my sick mind. You know. I'm trying to. I'm actually really thinking about the gig. I'm really thinking, you know, and I could use some help. Shecky, okay? I could we'll really do it for less money this time. Yeah, let me, uh, Nick, you see that? I don't know if you're looking at the same screen I'm looking at, but see the fat head down in the one corner over here. Which corner? I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't, you got to be more specific. Blissfully, blissfully unburdened by any of the financial dealings of the show. But oh, this is know, this is so not true. Do you know he's burdened by his own financial issues, but he's not. But blissfully, you know, when it comes to really thinking about the the bottom line, he doesn't care. It's like it's la la. But he has la. a gong. Yeah, well, My, you know, the man's got a gong. By the way, by I've the got way, a gong, and also I was I was yesterday. absolutely last night comparative shopping orange juice to bring those fruit cakes in under budget. Okay, you are <laughs> all right. You are you you have now that the one time where you are now a financial pillar. Of the Mike O'Mara show is the fruitcakes. Thank you. Prior to that, though, what would prior it to that? Um, I still brought you fruitcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't matter. <laughs> and by the way, last night I'm popping around Facebook, mm -hmm. which I don't do nearly as much as I do, and I see a post that's really like somebody that's close to us that I want to. There he is. Got Rob got to it first. See another post. Rob got to it first. See another one. Rob got to it first. <laughs> What he does. Well, maybe you should like, try a little harder. Like, like, like. like well, like, he's yeah, also sedentary, so, Mike. You're out and about. That's thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. I was. I was out all day yesterday. Back to you, Nick. Uh, I want to ask Don't you about being. You guys. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> you know, just you know, uh, it's like Are mommy and daddy getting a divorce. <laughs> I will. I will like Nick. I will like something on Facebook. Just click the like button. That that I really yeah. think, and I, my thought process will work like this. That's amazing. Rob didn't get here, and then I'll go down to the comments, and he's. He's done a little more. Saying, yeah. Way to go. <laughs> Pisses me off. Uh, anyway, back to you. Uh, yeah, yes, do you want to say something? Your mouth's open. I was Your just going to say, I, you know, this might be a you thing and not a me thing. I don't know. It's just, I, you know, it's, it's social media. You're supposed to get in and socialize. That's what yeah, it is. Just, I mean, you and your old man, God, it's like attached to your right ball. Well, it's a, anyway, it's uh, good for the family spiewack. I have to I agree. Mean, it's really a sitting still activity. Like, never miss. <laughs> Yeah, the never Great missers. Ass. How do you do that? <laughs> how do you do that, Oscar? How do you never miss? How do you never well, uh, ever? It, how it, are you it, never it, off of it? Okay, in fairness, look, I agree. Is it a little annoying? Yes. Is it is it good for the show and the brand? Yes, because he's got a yes. he's engaging. He yes. is constantly at his computer, 
uh, working on an edit job or you know surfing the web or surfing surfing Facebook, whatever he's doing. So he's he's in front of it. So when he sees a notification or new, it comes up in his feed, it's a top of mind. Boom. And if you're doing if you're doing an hour edit, like a, mm-hmm. a long project, this, every Nick, time you sometimes we have we'll to get do to you in a sec. Housekeeping, my my. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you hit save on a file that's an hour and ten minutes long, that's a two minute save. Sometimes I'm not just going to sit there and watch the hourglass. Yeah. I go bop over to Facebook and see what's going on. Be bops. All right. Yeah, right, we'll go boop, with that. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, back. Thank you. Back to you, Nick. Uh, let me. Uh... <laughs> it's okay. Keep this up. I'm just. I'm just here to watch. No, I become more self-conscious when we. When we. When we. We can reset, Mike. Here we go. Screen. Thank you. <laughs> Nick Loder is a singing pilot, and uh, he joins us now from his. Uh... I have a question. Yeah, I was going to ask him about being, about being a pilot. Are you uh, going to ask the pilot question? I was going to ask him a runway question, but you go first, please. Okay, you, oh, know, you guys get no. It's fine. Okay, you, you go ahead. I read an article on Facebook, and and you know there's fake news everywhere. So please, yes. if I'm a rube, I'm a rube. Uh, there's a, there was a research done, uh, a research study done that we are wasting land by having the, your traditional commercial airport grid laid out the way it is. That hypothetically we could have almost uh, like a, a circular runway that's in, almost infinite, and you could land at a forty-five degree angle like you would a Talladega a raceway, and you just go around and round and round until you slow down. <laughs> All right, Todd, you want to answer uh, that question, there. Nick? <laughs> I, I can respond. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's been out there for a long time. I, I, that's bunk. You need a straight runway. The, the, I, the, the issue is getting aircraft in from a par- approach and departure procedures. I mean, for example, in Charlotte, um, we're on the approach to Atlanta. So in order for aircraft to get in and out of Charlotte Douglas Airport, they have to be sequenced with Atlanta. So when you have a circular runway, they're going off every direction. Mm. I think that might be chaotic. But then again, I, I, maybe I'm closed-minded. Maybe no, I'm what if you took the circular is, runway and you... Is Charlotte? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> hate that airport. Always <laughs> have. Took the Sorry. circular runway and divided it one through twelve like a clock. Then you could say take off at one o'clock. Then you know where they're leaving from. I think I've landed at Charlotte maybe seven times in my entire life. Let me do my, my <laughs> verbal uh, explanation of, of landing at Charlotte. Okay. okay, we're going to land now. <laughs> uh, that's the way. That's the way I always feel like I, I land at uh, Charlotte. It's better now. Is it better now? Oh, Try us yeah. again. Try us okay, again. I will. So, so you're, a, uh, you're a single engine commercial pilot. What does that mean? That means I, uh, I got my private pilot's license like 10, 12 years ago, back when I was in college. And then I, I just kind of kept, I went to grad school at Texas A&M and it was really cheap to rent airplanes there. And the girl I was dating at the time was doing the same thing I was and uh, getting her uh, commercial and we're actually working for a flight instructor rating. So I thought it'd be a good time to go ahead and just knock it all out while I'm young and what you know got some time on my hands so I have my commercial in order to get your flight instructor rating I have to be a commercial pilot so basically it means I can if, if there's ever an airline that ran commercial single engine planes then I can fly for them but otherwise I would you know do uh, photography well you go like down to the Caribbean right and then yeah. uh, you know do I, some of those puddle jumpers yeah, in uh, the Caribbean yeah. something like that that's kind of cool but I mean it, obviously yeah. to be a flight instructor you got to know uh, you know, what is the single, because I've always in the recesses of my mind, harbored a, a, a desire to conquer my fear of flying by actually diving into it and getting a, li- a pilot's license. What is the, what is prohibitive when it comes to being a pilot? Is there anything that you would say, look, y- you know, I don't recommend you pursue <laughs> this. I don't know. I'm curious. What's the most important thing about being a pilot? I mean, in terms of, I mean, I think one of the most important things is, is, your behavior i mean no knowing your limits a lot of people get killed because they think they're god and they have a a god complex and they think well i'm you know i'm i'm better than the i'm better than the rules um in fact all of my i had to make lesson plans as a as a a flight instructor and all of my lesson plans start with a a rock star or a movie star that died doing that thing and teaching them not to richie valens that's one of them that's Mm -hmm. what yeah the the Uh, the big bopper Yes. With yes. the God complex Say, and good, that Oscar, type of thing, would that would that involve uh, like like ignoring weather limits and yeah. uh, and um, going JFK up in Jr. bad weather? It always example. seems like that's bad. What's that? Yeah, J- J- exactly. JFK Jr. is a great example. I mean, that's hazardous attitudes. You know, he, he, for one thing, he was on on some medicine, but uh, he flew into instrument conditions, and he was not an instrument rated. Uh, he wasn't prepared oh, for wow. in- instrument conditions. He wasn't rated for that. So even and I'm instrument rated, but I'm not current. I haven't flown instruments in 
gosh, five years. So if I were to go out in the clouds, my life expectancy would be like 35 seconds. Oh. You, know, I, you have to stay on top of it. I'm glad you bring up current because I'm curious. I mean, the only thing I can relate it to is like a driver's license. And of course, that's so much simp more simplistic than a pilot's license. What is the renewal process like? How often do you have to reprove that you're able to fly? Sure. For uh, to, to, to take people up every two years, I take a, 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 a flight review with another okay. instructor. Um, and be an instructor every two years. Also, I go and uh, basically take an online course. It's, it's kind of a joke just between us boys here. But anyway, you take an online course and that keeps me current for being a flight instructor. Um, it's pretty straightforward. So yeah, that is, that's basically it. I mean, the, it's funny that the, the federal aviation regulations allow you a lot of leeway to make bad decisions, but that's all those good rules news. are kind of written in blood. Yeah. Do you, fly, <laughs> do you fly regularly? It sounds like maybe you don't. Do you uh, just Every couple of months. Or? Yeah, I fly, I fly visual every, every few months. I try to stay on top of it and a lot of times so I, I build i design airports and stuff like that so i have projects that i'll have to take pictures of on my kind of my free time so I what is the that, that i mean I, that is just such a unique way of making a living is designing airports mm -hmm. and uh i would imagine it's not just picking a an open area of land uh, there has to do uh the, the one thing i know about airports is they have to be uh the topography has to be right and mm -hmm. the and the yeah. soil and things like that, all that comes into play, right? With uh, with putting those runways down, is that uh, is that well, close? It's, it's very it's very rare to have like what we would call a greenfield site where you just start from fresh on a brand new airport. That's that's extremely rare. Ninety nine percent of my projects are existing airports like Charlotte or other airports around the oh, Carolinas. I'm sorry, so I are... put you down when I said Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, so stop <laughs> stop ragging on Charlotte. They're good. It's like in the mountains, <laughs> right? Isn't Charlotte like kind of a mountainous airport? Isn't that the uh, um, no or or is it Raleigh, Durham? I don't remember where I went in the Carolinas. Uh, Asheville is. Asheville's mountainous. Um, nah, Raleigh's Asheville. hilly. Charlotte's, you know, it's, it's Piedmont. I mean, it's just not super hilly. But, yeah, it's um, just it's, busy and stuff. It's a very busy hub. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you have to you have to kind of redesign these airports. What's the biggest concern? You hear about crumbling infrastructure. What's right. the biggest uh, mm -hmm. concern with a lot of these uh, airports around the country right now? And then we'll get to ask uh, those questions. Yeah, it depends on the depends on the airport. A lot of airports need gates, um, just due to the. I mean, even even before COVID, things were going things were growing so fast that um, gates are you know for a lot of airports in North Carolina are so important. Just adding onto terminals, building out ramp space for parking aircraft overnight. Um, the you know it's funny that the size of aircraft that airlines like to use kind of is cyclical. Um, we're, we were seeing in the last 10 years, smaller regional jets being real popular. Now we're starting to see larger jets like our ERJ 175s being more popular and. Airbuses, um, so it, it kind of goes. It, there's always something. There's always construction at an airport. So whether it's re rehabilitating a runway, you know, basically reconstructing, you know, tearing it out and re replacing it with new pavement. Um, that pavement has like a 20-year design life. So that's 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 job security. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Oscar, you were going to ask. Yeah, uh, yeah so, speaking of designing airports, uh, what do you know about the Illuminati and DIA Denver International Airport? I've heard there are bunkers underneath that airport that the government secretly too, yeah. runs, a secret mm -hmm. society. Yeah. So another one of your uh, theories? I mean, if we're, if we're just you know debunking or confirming, I figure mm -hmm. we have the man on the line, uh, right. that uh, if it all goes sideways one day, that uh, the government officials have a bunker underneath DIA. Is you know that what true? I read? You know what I read? Yes. That they're storing underneath that airport What's runway? That? Hmm. Ballots. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the contrails you see are controlling your mind. Also, mm. that's proven. <laughs> right, we, everybody, you guys know Good. that. I mean, I'm, I'm bringing right. the obvious here. No, right. when, when we get a talking head, sometimes we have this, uh, sometimes we don't. But Rob has a list for you. Ask him about, uh, all right, I'm going to give you all four, and then you tell me the one you want to talk about. I want. I'm told to ask you about the time a lady bit you, uh, the gig in a swingers bar. By the way, was that Key West, a swingers bar? No, you did that gig. No. All right, oh. then I might ask you the fight that broke out during semi charmed life, and that time a lady flashed him. Uh, she was with her son. Uh, <laughs> any one of those or all four is fine with me there, Nick. What, what happened oh, with the lady biting you? Yeah. Yeah, the biting stories are always always good ones. So uh, we were setting up for a gig actually at the Swingers Bar in uh, upstate South Carolina, or not upstate South Carolina, near south of Charlotte. I'm not going to call it out by name because I don't want any trouble. All right. But uh, we're, we're setting up for this gig. And it was like four in the afternoon, five in the afternoon, something like that. And um, this, this, this place is on a lake. 
um, down on, kind of on the border between North and South Carolina. And this this boat of people comes down, you know, stumbling in like ah, right. and this this lady. She's probably 48, 50, 52, somewhere in that range. And sure. she's she's like got a little dress on. She's, you know, been on the lake. I, th- I thought well, she's just drunk. I can handle drunk people. So she starts talking to me, and she's like, "So, what kind of band are you guys?" I'm like, "Oh, we, we play '90s music." And she was like, '90s, like that." I'm like, "I already know where this is going because there's yeah. two kinds of people. There's people that are like, oh, cool, '90s,' and yeah. people are like, why would you play '90s? Like, that's like yesterday, you know.' And I think she was going down that route, and I may have made a comment where I was like, "I know to you '90s is like yesterday," but I may, and I don't remember exactly what I said, but I said, I think I said something that just was barely enough to set her off. But clearly she was on not only alcohol, but some kind of pills. And I, I corroborated that later in the night. But she was like, oh, my gosh, you're so cute. And then she went to hug me. And it was like a leech. It was like a clamp down on my neck. Oh, no. <laughs> and I remember, like, she was a little bit short. I was trying to pull her away. I grabbed her by the waist, trying to pull her away. And she was, like, coming, you know, pulling me. <laughs> didn't break skin. Didn't have to get she a rabies She's vampire. Shot, so that was she is, she is yeah. biting neck. She is vampire. Well, I mean. <laughs> As someone who played some band gigs myself, uh, you know, anytime you're out at the, you know, the and the old bar saying that nothing good happens after 11 p.m., uh, right. it just gets uh, worse and worse. But and I remember worse. the motto of your band was, "Thank goodness they didn't break the skin." Gun <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. fiction. <laughs> and and, break. and right. you did it. You did a gig. I remember we were in Key West. I think it was last year with my brother-in-law. Uh, and my sister and we went to a couple of bars that were just talking about whether we were going to go upstairs and oh, just yeah. look in on the uh, the I think the nude bar or the swingers bar or something like that. And we never did. We didn't have the courage uh, to do that. But you had a gig at a swingers bar. Did you know it was a swingers bar going into the gig? Did you know this was going to happen? The, actually, the Key West nude nude pool story is not even a gig. I'm I'm, a, I'm I'm ashamed to admit that's just a trip with a buddy of mine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> where, where now? There's a nude bar in Key West. I know where yeah. clothing is optional, but I was never aware of the what a nude pool in Key West. This is a bed. And, this is a bed and breakfast, man. Of course this it is. is. Key West is also. This is okay. not my highest. This is not my highest point in my life. <laughs> I'll tell the story. <laughs> I can. Yeah. Go ahead. Real quick, me and my me and my buddy, we went to Clemson. We're Clemson alum, so uh, we went down for the, for the Orange Bowl, just me and him. And uh, it was New Year's Day weekend, and we were going down, and we it was in Fort Lauderdale, but we had a few extra days, so we we're like, hey, let's go to Key West. It'll be great. And this is back in my single days, so uh, we were driving down to Key West. We're like, we get on like that long, you know, go to oh, Marathon, yeah. all those little cities, yeah. the Long Bridge. I'm yeah. like, hey, we need to find a place great to stay. Drive. So we're like, you know, looking for a place to stay on, you know. Expedia and stuff, everything sold out. I'm like, what the hell do we do? So, I fa- I, ca- I start calling bed and breakfasts, and I, I called this bed and breakfast, and they had one room, one one single bedroom with one bed, and we're like, dude, this is all we got. You see, this return back and go back to where we were staying in, in Fort Lauderdale. So we're like, all right, screw it. Let's just get the bed and breakfast. We'll figure it out. We roll into this bed and breakfast. There's roosters everywhere. We go up. We bring our little suitcases up to this lovely, um, lovely place. And this lady sees two men walk into a bed and breakfast in Key West, and she says, "Well, hey, gentlemen." We're like, "Hey, what's up?" You know, I'm like, "Well, uh, your your bedroom is upstairs. It's the so and so room. It's very lovely." And she starts talking about the bed and breakfast, and she's like, "Well, you know, there's there's a pool. It is clothing optional." And I'm like, "Oh, that's kind of odd." And me and him are talking about doing like a booze cruise because we're here to get party, right? Right. So uh, we, I asked her, I'm like, hey, you know, I read about there's like these cruises that you guys have, like a booze cruise kind of thing. And then she looks at us and she says, so do you guys want something more romantic or more party? And I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, I, I see what's happening here. Yeah. This is, I see what, I see what's happening. I'm, I'm like, it's a clothing I go into optional like, gay bed and breakfast. Sure. Yes. <laughs> and my buddy is dumb enough Sorry. to say, Sorry, like, I always read ahead of these stories. <laughs> like, spoiler alert, right? So, you know, I'm like, whoa, whoa. I'm like, boobs, football. I want, yeah, we just want booze cruise. We want a party. And then my buddy's like, yeah, yeah, we, And she gives us some names. And then she's like, well, guys, by the way, your room's upstairs. Would you like, again, would you like to see the pool? And I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Time out. Don't see the pool. And my buddy's like, yeah, let's see the pool. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, hey, Nick, so one thing. She, when, uh, when she asked you if you were looking for a party cruise or a romance cruise and you said, you know, party, did your friend at any point say, but romance is nice? Because <laughs> <You know what? laughs> he's the one that wants to see the pool. Too. Yeah, exactly. Have you, made the, have you connected the dots at this point before you go to the pool? Let me put, you know, I will, I will, I will tell back ahead, you know, I met this guy in an acapella group in college. So maybe the dogs <laughs> are more connected. We used to sing in choir. Yeah, together. you need to sharpen your pencil, pal. Did you ever no, make it to the pool? With that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two so guys. We, yes. Bed and breakfast. She, why not? <laughs> she, exactly. So she led us to the pool. And it was like a sausage buffet. I mean, it was just oh, no. everywhere you – I mean, it, I've always figured like a nude beach, there's really no one there because no one does this stuff. This is like what you you know read about or whatever. No, it was heavily, heavily occupied nude pool, age um, age 55 and up. Mm. All oh, male. skewing older. All male, was, all male 55 and up. How pleasant oh, yeah. was that? That and was they, that. See, they see these two young bucks walk in and they're like, all right. <laughs> it was not not a good scene. Uh, I kind of blacked great. out at that point. That's yeah. great. Oh my god! Well, next time we get young, we'll talk about the fight that broke out during the uh, semi uh, charm oh, life. Yeah. And uh, you know, congratulations on getting a uh, new gig at the RV resort. That's going to be kind of a, a socially distanced gig for uh, Gump Fiction. I take it, Nick. Oh yeah, I'm sure in South Carolina. I look forward to getting the COVID. It's going to be great. <laughs> It'll be the Kobe. Well, we look forward to things getting back to normal where all the bands can get out there and do that. And uh, uh, thank you for 22 years of support. We appreciate that. And is there anybody you want to say hello to with this uh, opportunity? And by the way, Nick, one of the record setters for time on Hell the yeah. show. Yeah. Just cool guy to talk to. Anybody you want to say hello to uh, before uh, we let you go? My lovely, uh, my lovely wife, Whitney, uh, my Jeopardy partner. Oh, and, that's uh, sweet. And uh, lovely Mason, good congratulations on that, uh, who is uh, very strong. Don't ever steal that line. It's horrible, Rob. That's horrible, uh, horrible. Nick, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, and Nick. stay safe when you're flying. Uh, Rob Spiewak, that was a good one. We will start the show right now, everybody. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. We are live from the Podcast Village Studios at our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. The Mike O'Mara Show is on now. Heard all over the joint. Uh, <laughs> Wilmington, Delaware, Oakland, California. Buenos Aires, Argentina. Forest nice. City, North Carolina. Flagstaff, Arizona. And Clawney Island. The Mike O'Mara Show is on now and brought to you by My Bookie. Love this website. So oh, yeah. easy to navigate. So great to get involved with the NFL. You're going to love it, too. Uh, late fall college ball, the NBA bubble, UFC Fight Island. It's clear. 2020 has been a year unlike any other, which is why you need a sports book with offers unlike any other, including the Masters going on right now. Tiger yes. Woods in the hunt. Yes. I was even to look. They're starting early this morning. They're playing right now. Uh, whether you're a first timer or have been uh, playing for years, you're going to love my bookie. If you can imagine it, you can bet on it and don't miss their huge casino platform. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you get access to all the classic table slot and card games. The best part is my bookie. The doors never close. Uh, I'm Mike O'Mara, and I guarantee it. Why'd you put that in there? That's you good copy. <laughs> oh, stop it. Uh, make the smart play and sign up today at my bookie. Use promo code TMOS and sign up to grab yourself a free $20 bet with your deposit. The terms are simple. You make your deposit, you use the code, and you get hooked up with a free bet to use on anything in the sports book. If you've been on the fence about trying your hand at betting, it's a great way to get in on it. And uh, since it's on the house, you can't beat it. Officially winning season at MyBookie. Join in on the fun and win some cash while you are at it. Welcome, welcome. Hey, you welcome. know, you that brought up so the Masters. Uh, you yeah. know what's funny is that, and this didn't occur to me until they talked about it on the news this morning, they're having a hard time getting the rounds in because the days are so much shorter than they are yeah. in May. Going it's off, getting dark. Uh, I think for the first time on the front and back nines to uh, get it in there. It's still beautiful. It's still a yeah. beautiful television event to uh, look at, but it's just a little off. But of course, uh, what's great about superstardom is that even with the Masters being held in November, right. if El Tigre starts to mm -hmm. uh, keep those afterburners on and play mm -hmm. like he's playing, 
All bets are off, and he will do it again. Every single time you count that guy out, I know he it. shows up with it's guys half the new his hair. age. And, and uh, it's the new hair. I am dying to hear you talk about that yeah. because I watched him with the hat on yesterday, and I didn't see the hat come off. And then you come in here, and you're saying he got – did he get plugs okay, or something like that? It's not confirmed, but, right. but, 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 but while, while I set it up, just briefly uh, – Last year, during his Masters Championship, mm-hmm. a, a lot of the haters were saying, hey, and look, I've got a receding hairline as well. They're just like, hey, what, what about that hairline? He's not really winning at life at everything. And right. then this year, uh, yeah, he has a hat on most of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, during a, what was a press conference, um, or I'm sorry, w- was a social media moment, he shared his picture and see, that's still receding right there, Rob. There's an actual updated picture right now. Okay. Uh, okay still where looking. that's recent from yesterday, where he has a picture of just him, I think, and his daughter, or no, I'm sorry, uh, one of his family members. And the hair looks rich and it looks like what it's, mm. it looks deep. It looks like it's it's got a lot of foliage. It's not thinning. <laughs> foliage. And I said, awesome. whoa. Like, did he go to Bosley? Or I know he didn't go to Istanbul. Now, what is Bosley? What is Bosley? Oh, it's just a famous late night uh, bald man's dream of going to get uh, hair implants uh, or a scalp treatment where you go do and get hair do restoration. It, do they do it better uh, than they used to? Because my memory of guys that would do that, uh, one guy that I work with, a sales guy, uh, D- uh, Dennis, let me see. That's yesterday, Rob? Yes, that's recent. That's yes. at the, uh, oh, that's totally, di- that's totally yeah, different. Right? And you know what it is? It's that the Kevin James, we, when we saw it up close, it's even if it looks right, it's always too straight. It looks like you know they like drew a line I, and stuck I, I, to I, it. I actually disagree because I, I look, I, I know we joke a lot about it. When you see a guy, even if you have to question it, I think, and I think 10 years ago, there was a lot of stigma with, with hair um, you know, restoration therapy, as I like, like to call yes. it, yeah, I'm or hair right. plugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, for some reason, I feel like a guy like Tiger should just shave his head and he'd be A-OK and he's good to go. Yeah, but absolutely. now I see him with his new hair, allegedly. He looks good. And I'm like, well, that looks pretty good. It looks pretty so, – but, but my question, and I don't even know whether you can answer this. I remember the guy – this is back in the 80s that we worked with – uh, who went through, they took the hair off the back of his head and popped it up on the top, and he had these nasty, bloody holes down on it, and it was this it lengthy looked like, process. Yeah, it was like, almost like they went in Christ. with like, an, like a little apple core, and oh, they take out little tufts and then put them up front. Painful, uh, too. Horrible it, to see. I think the pain is still there, but I feel like it's come a long way, and if... If if look a guy with like Tiger he's can spare he doesn't have to spare like he can buy the best of the best and if yeah. that is the best of the best yeah there's, I mean, there's can I be hope. honest with you I mean being the mega Tiger fan that I am I think I prefer that kind of new look yeah. I, when when you look at Tiger uh, with that now my baldness my my uh, when I when I went down to like a number one yeah and I don't know if this is I don't think this is the headphone line. But my headphone line goes yeah. right here. On Lean the more top. forward, please. A little yeah, more forward. I'm sorry. That's all right. Yeah. My headphone yeah. line goes right Mike, there. I'm happy to tell and you that you're you a candidate. You'll notice that I have what a is candidate. to be <laughs> Count the, the balance. male pattern baldness, yeah. where it's right where the headphone line is. And as I'm growing it out again, it is such a pain in the ass because it's really just, it's super thick through here. Like right through yeah. here, it's a okay. Then you get the headphone line, and then I come down here, and it's get this is where, which I guess this would be the classic male pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Right here where it gets uh, thin. And I know if I grow it long enough at this stage of the game, I don't have to sweat it that much, but I'm wondering whether, you know, right now I'm kind of making that call as to whether I just go back to the number one and keep it that way or. I try to recreate the, uh, you know, the flowing hair. Do you remember when you about... uh, Also, you love surgery, so this might be perfect for you. Yeah, you're due for one, an elective (laughs) surgery. Uh, About a month and a half ago, you said grow my hair out and see what happens. I found this out, that my pattern is not only typical pattern, but also... Yeah, what, is, that, is that even a pattern? What you it's, have? it's more of a design, I think. It's a it's, it's like crooked. Pangea. It's it's very. So you're crooked. still in denial, Rob. You don't no, no. have a pattern. No, but what I'm saying is Lean that down I have the receding. So everybody can see. 
That is not a pattern. <laughs> it's atypical in that it is not pattern. It's very crooked. It, my hairline goes like this. It goes around here and then out and then back. And then what started as just a small dot on the crown of my head is now all the way forward. And I can tell, I've said this before, I track my baldness by the amount of drag on my razor when I'm shaving my head. Because it's like smooth, 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 smooth. And there's like no resistance for about the size of a five by eight card on top of my head. None resistance. What, what Mike, uh, what Rob doesn't realize is that uh, nature has um, redistricted his hairline over the years. Like, and yeah. the, where is it gone? Uh, so it, it, at one point in your life, it was probably like, hey, I, I got... I got this working for me. I got this. And you and we all have this. Mm -hmm. But when you were growing back your hair, especially when we would talk before the show, we'd always say, is that is that a mole? What's going on in your head? Because yeah. you couldn't really tell from the camera. And you'd lean in. I'm like, oh, my God. It's, it yeah, looks like some fracking went down. I'm sure that most of the hair is, uh, is uh, retreated to my back. Yeah. That's where it's growing now. It's, it's a I don't there. want I, I don't want to have that. I don't want to have that. Oh, <laughs> Like an think, Al Lewis? You know I, I mean? think we all, <laughs> for, you've got Windows hair for, for your age, I you've got, got hair. I got, for my hair, and, yeah. and by the way, the gray is just still on the sides, pretty much. That's uh, that's. This true. is the way I, I understand it. it. They, Oscar's, Oscar's mantra today is, Mike, for your age. <laughs> They've got. For your age, you're doing they, great. They'll take the hair <laughs> from the bot. let's say down here, from yeah, the, your back of your, the back of your neck, right? You've got plenty of hair you down got, there. You got good hair down there? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, not I down there, but hip, back there. From my ass? No, from 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 uh, another part of your. Mike, I guess Mike's hair has gotten curly. Above, <laughs> above your, a little above your neck. Do you have full? Are you like full of hair there? <laughs> pubic hair club for men. I'm sorry. Long time ago. Pubic hair. I'm Ned Ulock. <laughs> the pubic hair club for men. I have more than enough hair down there. If, we, a if we had a sponsor, would you do it? Uh, new. No. Absolutely not. No, I have no. If I'm really feeling like this is growing back funky, mm -hmm. I'm buzzing it again. Okay. I'll be fine with that. But right now, the problem is. No I shady have sponsor, is that... Mike? No shady sponsor for you? <laughs> no. But Bosley, is that what you're saying? Is that the gold I, I, standard? I, I, I don't know. It's just it's an ongoing joke for anybody that stays up all night because that's when it comes together. You're they're, they're banking on men being at home hammered saying, I want to go bald. Let me go well, Mike, Bosley. If, if you go with Bosley, you might end up talking like David Doyle yeah. <laughs> from Bosley. Uh, by the way, I watch my TV commercials during loser time. That's why there are 500 commercials for Car Shield <laughs> every time I'm watching my. I shouldn't say that. What do we get that for an appetizer? Oh, God. Never, never do that. Uh, we'll take a break and come back with more fun and more thrills on the Mike O'Mara Show every ball day. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show brought to you by Best Fiends. Hey, listen, uh, how long have you been playing Best Fiends, Rob Spiewak? God, I think over a year now. It's, it's and uh, I still and it still is confounding and entertaining. I love the game. It's so great. It is. Uh, if you're like me, you're uh, running low on uh, on bingeable stuff. Really, it happens. Believe it or not. How do you beat the boredom? Just play Best Fiends. It's the free to download puzzle game. Uh, you're gonna love it. Uh, unlike your favorite streaming platform, there's no end in sight. Best Fiends has literally thousands of levels with more added all the time. It just keeps going and going and going. You get the point. Rob is hooked and if you're anything like him, you will be too. No Wi-Fi, no worries. You don't even need an internet connection. No. Yeah, Rob. No. Mike, I'm on level yes, 1055. <laughs> they have great sandwiches too. <laughs> they have great sandwiches too. Uh, level 1055 is called Cascade Blockade and I want you to know, Mike, the slugs are back in play. You oh, have to destroy six slugs. slugs. And you have to uncage four yellow things that look like little coronaviruses, but I'm sure they're not. Uh, but it's a yeah, level 1055. You're going to love this game. No end in sight. It's the best. Download Best Fiends free today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. That's what you want to do. Uh, go for it. Have fun. Uh, and I want to get this out of the way yeah. before we get out of here uh, this week because uh, – Carl and I did find something that we are trying to watch. I just hate it, but I don't hate it. I can watch it. I can watch it. It's the uh, reboot on, I think it's on Netflix, of Unsolved Mysteries. The oh, yeah. Old, uh, oh, yeah, sure. The old TV show that used to be on. And <laughs> this is going to sound dumb, but I just hate that it's unsolved. What's yeah, the you, point? It leaves you, hanging, you know, at the it? end, they're going to give, all they're going to do is sit there. This is like Dateline without the uh, kicker. Yeah. This is like coming on and just going, you know, here's the guy. He wandered off. He was bruised. They found him in a landfill, and nobody knows what happened to him. Goodbye. That's it. 
Lady goes into a Norway hotel, puts a bullet in her head. There's nobody else in the room. Nobody knows what might have happened to her. Well, she committed suicide. That's what it looks like, but we don't know. Blah, 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 blah. And then it goes How on and on How did he fall through that roof and yep. leave his shoes <laughs> right. all over the hotel? You watched that know. one. I don't in know. Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, that was the one about. It, it's just, uh, it's not satisfying, and I'm not sure how that show ever was a hit. Because <laughs> if you're like me, you want a little bit of closure, right? You yes, want that yes. oh, ending. that So every get everything gets figured out and I it's think not even like closure is more important. wanted where you're trying to catch the crook I think closure is more important than ever and one of my favorite games is when I was watching restaurant impossible uh after they would show you know I want a stainless steel bar and all that stuff <laughs> you would go with Robin Bar. you would google three months later and it's, this is before COVID all the restaurants are closed they last for Let like me a just month say this. <laughs> when I'm walking into a restaurant after exploding my triceps, I truly think that this is disgusting. When you don't even have labels on this food, it's rotting in the back of the refrigerator. Yes. I have you bought into that. the theory? And, and I agree with you. And they do the the show for what it's worth is well done. It, there is no yes. satisfaction. Yeah, but it feels like they've, that you're not allowed to listen to the second side of a record or something. This show it's great until it stops. Is all about your follow up, your second uh, screen experience. If you're on the computer looking at the Reddit uh, pages devoted to the series or each one of these yep. episodes of yep. what people are working on, late breaking news, mm -hmm. if they find any so they're clues. So steering people to other platforms well, I is think, what you're saying. Think about. You want people to think about your product all the time. You watch yeah, an hour right. episode, then you're on the internet for an hour reading people's comments. Then you, so you, it's like the, I guess, engagement period is not just the show anymore, especially with that show. Because there's so many people that want to talk about it, like these crime dramas, mm -hmm. that they're like, all right, let's, let's talk about it here. Let's talk about it here. Let's talk about it here. So then when you come back to another episode, then you go through that cycle again. It's a genius show with, frankly, a premise that we weren't used to getting anything solved when we were younger watching TV. That's true. Let me explain to you the joy that I experienced watching the uh, documentary about Michelle McNamara, Patton's ex-wife, uh, mm -hmm. who tragically passed away. Uh, I'll be gone in the dark. That was knowing what the ending was going to be. And that was more satisfying to me just to know that they got the guy uh, in no small part due to her efforts. And I love that. I like a movie where I know that we're going to kind of figure it out at the end. I just think uh, they let it lay there, and it, it's I, for some reason it just seems lazy. We me. crave what well, we crave yeah. resolution. You know what? One of the greatest, and there was an article in New Yorker a few weeks ago that a show that has had a tremendous resurgence during COVID, people are binging Columbo, the old mystery show with Peter Falk. And one of the reasons is that you know in the first break of the episode who's guilty. It's not a show like Murder, She Wrote, where you have to wait till the end. You, you know sure that's how... not fake news coming from the Spiewak uh, No, no, this is, this is absolutely <laughs> true. It's absolutely true. And Columbo was sort of groundbreaking because they would, they'd tell you who was guilty at the front of the show, and then you watched Columbo solve it. And because of and that... that's enormously satisfying. Mm -hmm. So satisfying, because you're along for the ride, yeah. and you know you're going to get there. Unsolved Mysteries, it's, it is. It leaves you feeling unfulfilled, unsatisfying, wearying, as Orson Welles was. Would say. Unrewarding. It's yes. uh it's something where so anyway, I just wanted to share that. That's uh that's all. That's all that's all that's, that's, that's all, all that we have right now. We have to take another short break. I'm sorry, I apologize. Right. We ran a little bit late yes. today. Thanks and, a lot, uh, loader. Mm. When we come back, we're gonna do a little house cleaning on the Mike O'Mara show with uh, an unnecessary task mm. that, uh, mm. that I don't think we need to do. I'll uh, run it past the guys because unlike uh, what our country is trying to be right now at the White House, we are not trying to be a dictatorship here. We are a democracy. Ooh. A democracy. Okay. Democracy? Uh, we'll be right back. Democracy. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. You know, flu season is right around the corner. So it's more important than ever to have a strong <laughs> abuse system. That's why Liquid IV created Hydration Multiplier plus Immune Support to maintain and strengthen your immune system. It's a cutting-edge blend of vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, and a product called Wellimmune. Yes. In convenient single-serving packets. Wellimmune is a naturally sourced beta-glucan that's proven to help strengthen your immune system, and the vitamin C and D and the zinc will keep you at your best. Each packet is bursting with fresh, natural tangerine flavor. Tangerine! 
makes your immune system feel good. And it takes so good at Liquid IV. Anyway, plus Liquid IV is donating 3.7 million servings uh, in response to COVID-19. They're going to hospitals, first responders, food banks, veterans, active military. They're giving back. Love, love, love that. To date, mm -hmm. the company has donated over 6.7 million servings globally. It's convenient, and I love it. Liquid IV's new hydration multiplier plus immune support is available at Walmart. Or order online and get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TMOS at checkout. What is that music? This is uh, Jimmy Dorsey doing tangerine. <laughs> oh, that's 25% off anything you order when you use promo code TMOS. Tangerine. At liquidiv.com. You hit the post. <laughs> she Can't believe I did. Is all <laughs> Get better hydration today at liquidiv.com. Promo code TMOS. What do you, Rob Spiel, you know the, the, what this song is about? I don't. Is it a, is it a it's tangerine from the movie. Lady? It's from the movie or the show, the Broadway show Fleet's in, which was, okay. I think, about enemas. Oh, I don't. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> the fleet's in, honey. Oh. <laughs> yes, it is. No, there it was a it was a service you musical from the war, step. and it was a big hit record. A lot of people, uh, you, you might even know it from the uh, Herb Alpert album uh, "Whipped Cream and Other Delights," which is another good version of it. Is, it a, is this a fan favorite of Rob Spiewak? Do you like this song? It's a great song. Tangerine. And if you want to go slightly more current, remember in the, well, this is only 40 years ago, Risky Business, when they're on the train? Yes. That is a band called Tangerine Dream Ooh. that did the song oh, Love God, on a Real I Train. I always thought that was Peter Gabriel. No, uh-uh. Oh, and remember, Gary man. Stein's wife is in this movie. Not this really? scene. Not, Not this scene, scene Not though. This scene. No. Not this scene. She was the babysitter? Clarify, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Man, Rebecca De Mornay. Wow, is he wow. Mm. That, this movie, you want to talk about a sexy movie. Get out. Know, yeah. That was a sexy movie. That was a truly, and in spite of Tom Cruise. Well, in spite you know of Booger. <laughs> Curtis Armstrong was in it. Well, I, he, Curtis Armstrong, a working actor. Like, oh, he's still, right? he, was, he did five seasons of The New Girl. He was great on Moonlight. All the Revenge of the Nerds movies. Yes, of course. Yes. Booger. 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 But he'll never live that down. Booger. <laughs> so sad. His sensei was snot, was it snotty or something like that. It's probably culturally inappropriate. <laughs> All right. Uh, we, we try to uh, give you small doses of reality, ladies and gentlemen. But the fact is, here it is Friday. Uh, this is our last Friday. day of the week. Friday. And we are sitting here without the, uh, uh, the formal or even the beginning of the transfer of power taking place because uh, the certain quadrants are keeping their heels dug in. Uh, now uh, it's brought to uh, my attention today that we are going to have perhaps marches on Washington this mm. particular weekend. Mm. Yes. You guys are in our nation's capital, Rob, just outside. Oscar in the belly of the yes. beast. What are you hearing about what might be happening in D.C. this weekend um, as things seem to be getting crazier and crazier? There is supposedly a MAGA faction coming in uh, to march on Washington. Uh, in the protest of the election, the hypothetical, I mean, the, the election results, um, they say that, you know, like every other narrative out there that says that not all the ballots uh, weren't counted accurately. And then on the other side, there's a counter protest that's allegedly going to come out. And I say this all because it, it it is interesting that as far as living in the nation's capital, that you live in what is uh, a fortnight set now because yeah. everything is boarded up. Um, and ready for some sort of disturbance. And I was joking about it last year. I mean, I'm sorry, last week within, I think, at the body of the show, where I said, well, all these people spend all this money on plywood. Why don't they take it down? Because election's over. No, 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 no. Whoever's forecasting is much brighter than I am. They're keeping it up just in case. The the police uh, officials in D.C. said it's a good idea to keep up the plywood a little longer. They don't know. They're having to sort of gather their information from social media, which makes it, you know, a little sketchy to begin with. It's either going to be called the Million MAGA March, which is very clever, or the Stop the Steal Rally. So I think they both have the same uh, viewpoints. But And then how do they, of course, because it's Washington, D.C., they close the news report by saying, so expect traffic delays this weekend in the city. Yeah, the pro-Trump rallies have garnered support from Fox News host Sean Hannity. 
as well as more fringe figures, including Enrique Tarrio, chairman of the Proud Boys, self-described American nationalist and social media agitator Nicholas Fuentes, conservative provocateur uh, Jack Pozobiec, Pozobiec? Pozobiec, uh, who promotes the, uh, promoted the Pizzagate conspiracy. So they're all coming in. Yeah. Uh, you know what? No big whoop. Don't worry about it. Uh, Oscar, I think you're going to have a fine weekend. Yeah, it's going to be I, nice weather up in D.C.? It's going to be so, nice uh, it's, it, it, I, you know, it's, it's uh, I guess fall is here, Mike. It's rainy. Yeah. Then it's kind of sunny, just like global, global sunny warming Sunny tomorrow is to with us. a high of 54, but, but, low of 37. But, Sunday with a 60% chance of rain and a high of 59. Back to you, Oscar. I don't want to dismiss what's going on downtown, but for if, if you live in, and we're still working in the city, you're not desensitized to it, but you're just like, all right, maybe I'll take uh, L Street instead of M Street, and then I'll yeah. get around to the garage yeah. regardless. Mm-hmm. Here it goes. And, yeah. and uh, you know, things are moving, and uh, we'll see what happens. But it's just sad. It's very, very sad. It and, is. Uh, you know, and uh, no one's really, uh, you know, the only way I think it's going to move in the, the right direction is if people in his own party. Uh, by the way, Arizona called by yeah. NBC, CNN, uh-huh. everybody today. Good for it. Good for, for Arizona. Uh, finally, another state in the Biden camp. And, uh, you know, here we are. We'll see what happens. It's but, starting uh, to look bad sad. for his reelection, Mike. <laughs> big, big plywood is the only winner here. The winner. Big winner. plywood. But have 84. you had rain since they put them up? Yes, it has. Can't reuse it if it's not pressure treated. <laughs> That's the way it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but anyway, we'll keep you posted as much as we can, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll come back with the Oscars take of the Oscars week right take. here on the Mike O'Mara Show, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Cornerstone. 50 years from now, when yeah, historians boy. chronicle the pandemic, <laughs> And all the ways it affected the world, one thing they'll talk about is how the housing industry surged during this unprecedented time. Mortgage rates dropping to all-time lows, housing appreciation soaring, record numbers Mm. of sales contracts. You don't want to read about it uh, in the history books. You want to call my friend Mark Livingstone and his team at Cornerstone First Financial and do it now. Other companies advertise ultra-low rates, but don't tell you that they're charging you a ton of origination points. A ton! Call the only company that I recommend, Cornerstone First Financial. I recommend them because I've used them. So is Oscar. At this level, and a lot of our listeners as well, at this level, you likely never need to refi again. Call the loan professionals at Cornerstone, and don't miss out on being a part of history. Whether you purchase, refinance, cash out, or get a lower rate and shorter term. 202-625-1221 202-625-1221 or cornerstonefirst.com Cornerstone First Financial Personal Attention from application to closing and now oh no <laughs> it'll be okay it's time for Oscars Day Oscars Day a review and comment on the news of the day that is only our Bolivian bloviator can do it. The views expressed by Oscar Santana in no way reflect the views of the American people. People of the Michael Mara Show. Hey. Right thinking people of the United States. Hey. Or anybody out there. That's the way I look at it. And now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Oscar's take. Oscar's take. Yeah. Oscar. Yes, sir. The weekend, we'll do the halftime show at the 2021 Super Bowl, which is scheduled for February 7th at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. The weekend says, quote, we all grow up watching the world's biggest acts play the Super Bowl, and one can only dream of being in that position. I'm humbled, honored, ecstatic to be the center of that infamous stage this year. Jay-Z obviously had some say in the choice, given his partnership with the NFL, and he said, quote, the weekend has introduced a sound all his own, his soulful uniqueness has defined a new generation of greatness in music and artistry. This is an extraordinary moment in time, and the show is going to be an extraordinary experience with an extraordinary performer. I think I heard that you were a fan of the weekend. Oh, week, yeah, the right? weekend. Um, his catalog of music is. It's catchy, Mike. It's not offensive. It's perfect for the NFL, and it's catchy. I, well, I don't know. Look, he's got, he's got, and he makes food that's tasty. <laughs> well, it's not for you, Mike. It's not for Rob. It's, Disagree. It's almost not for me. Disagree. You take a song like "I Can't Feel My Face." It is catchy. It's a pop record. Okay, and I'm all in. All I'm right, in. but you yeah. like it has the word "face" in it. Face. Yes. 
<laughs> I believe look, look, uh, I, I like the uh, Super Bowl where they use the up with people singers. Uh, for me, it's going to be interesting how they t they actually take this show and bring it into the COVID-19 world. And by that, I mean to actually perform and make it look big on a field that will be socially distanced. Because mm -hmm. by the time we have the Super Bowl, we're not going to have the vaccine deployed everywhere. Uh, it will be interesting to also see how they get stand, uh, fans in the stands and how that evolves by February. So I I'm looking forward to it, Mike. It seems like they're taking all the uh, the right steps to make sure that this is performance goes off. It is uh, a key aspect to the Super Bowl perform uh, overall. Yeah. But I don't know how they're going to pull it off on the field without as many people as they would in the past to make it look hey, it's like Tampa. Yeah. Come one, come all. Who well, gives a rat's ass? <laughs> I, right. I, I believe the performers are going to care. So yeah, we'll gonna, find out. Know, yeah. I don't, I don't know. But Florida, it was open. Thanks, Does Santos. Uh, you listen to Oscar's <laughs> take. Oscar's take. Enjoy. Oscar, Jeopardy producers still won't discuss a possible replacement for Alex Trebek, but fans are pushing their favorites, including. Reading Rainbow host LeVar Burton. Mm. Hey! Mm. A petition to give him the gig was closing in on 50,000 signatures as of last night. I think it'd be an amazing choice, even though he's a little longer in the tooth. Uh, and to be clear, LeVar wants the job. Someone suggested him on Twitter back in September, and he replied, quote, not going to lie, I feel like I've been preparing my whole life to occupy the host podium when Alex retires. I think it's an absolute solid choice. What, yeah. uh, what say you? It's in a book. Take a look. A reading rainbow. Uh, LeVar, <laughs> cool your jets. Uh, the, the, literally, we're not what, a week out. We're not even a week into his passing. And people out there, I know that you want to move on, but whole, just just the man, Alex Trebek. It's what we do. We have no soul. He's, That's true. He, people named LeVar take jobs. Give him a moment. to Give, give the family a moment to mourn. <laughs> How do you think they feel when they get... They get out there and they're like, oh, I guess they're replacing our father, uh, our husband, this icon, right? Now it's you're making too me early. feel bad. I too agree early. with you. I agree. Yep, too early. That's a good take on that. I like that. Everybody chill out. I still think it'd be a good host. If, I agree. Uh, you know, when they make that, that call. Uh, you're listening to Oscar's take, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Oscar's take, and my, I've lost my soundboard. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, <laughs> earlier this <laughs> week, Oscar, <laughs> Mountain Dew announced a new cookbook where every recipe uses Mountain Dew. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> but maybe you were thinking, whoa. That sounds too fancy. This might be more your speed. Cheetos just announced they're coming out with a holiday cookbook. And yes, all 22 of the recipes involve Cheetos. The recipes include things like Flamin' Hot Friends Giving Turkey, mm. Chester's Kickin' Cornbread Dressing, Chester's Cheesy. Who's Chester? Chester's the Cheeto Chester on the Cheeto bag. From yeah, Cheetos. Come on. Sorry. Chester's Cheesy Chester corn. also says that he wants to host Jeopardy. He's been dreaming about it dreaming his whole about cheesy it. life. Yeah. And good, better, best pumpkin pie. Black. Uh, anyway, if you want the cookbook, you can get it at the Cheetos website by making a donation to World Central Kitchen Nonprofit. But it's sold out. Duh! Duh! What's your uh, take, Oscar? Mike, um, that list is your general practitioner's worst nightmare. They don't care about you. They just want to move Cheetos. Now, do I think it's an interesting concept? I've, we've probably been doing it with chips or Cheetos or whatever when you take a few chips and throw it on your sub. People do that right. all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This concept is not necessary for America right now. I, and I'm not hating on it. I, got, I like the, the Doritos shell tacos. I, I'm a fan of all these incarnations. But we have enough on our plate that's killing us. Again, just like the, the Alex Trebek situation, take a beat. Don't mess with Thanksgiving too much. You want to give us 20 desserts? That's fine. But don't, don't add Cheetos uh, or cheese poofs, your, whatever you'd like, to our Thanksgiving dinner. Just not yet. Got it. All right. We're listening to Oscar's Take, Oscar's ladies and gentlemen. Take. Oh, and I owe you one more, too. So hold on, just so we're even. <laughs> OCD. There we go. Done. Oscar, we are entering pecan season. Uh, so it's time to dive back into this debate. Which pronunciation? I can't believe this story came across. This is great. I know because we already discussed it. We did it, it. yesterday. Uh, which pronunciation is right? Pecan or pecan? A new survey asked people, and the results uh, solved literally nothing. Fifty point five four percent of people voted for pecan. Forty nine point four six percent voted for pecan. But I heard on Parler 
that pecan, pecan roll observers had to stand two feet away. So we'll see if the votes stand. <laughs> uh, parlor joke. Um, uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. And I thought about this. Why I was obsessed with it. The same question when we uh, two days ago on the show. This is Friday, Wednesday show. Uh, we were going. Rob and I were actually against you, Mike, because you're a pecan guy or you know pecan I've, I've guy. been thinking about it too oscar i know it's your bit but i just want to weigh in with this yeah. i think i say it both ways i don't think i'm consistent i think with how i might I say do it. the same thing believe it or not i think i might go pecan pie i yeah. think pecan pie I, I say pecan and what a delicious pecan no pecan is my way don't you guys say pecan don't well I, say it's, pecan? It's, it's, like i say pecan pie pecan pie how yeah, do you I say pronounce pe- it oscar i, I say i say a- well i say pecan no uh, yeah i say pecan you say pecan. i say pecan i know i say pecan I think. Uh, I say but also, when potato. I order from nuts.com, I say pecan. Yeah. And I say, so I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's, it seems like I go both ways. What like does Jim Twitch Neighbors. say? What does Mark Riddell say? He says, I'll have a promo about pecans for you in 20 minutes. <laughs> Very good. Uh, <laughs> Thank listen you. Listen to Oscar's take. Oscar's Oscar, take. finally, Johnny Depp's issues with Amber Heard <laughs> cost him his gig in the Fantastic Beasts movie, and his fans want retribution. Somebody launched a petition to get her fired from Aquaman 2. Ooh. And it has well over 1.1 million signatures. Uh, the petition claims that Amber was the abusive one in the relationship, not Johnny. And since they're split, she's been on a crusade to ruin him. For ruin. the record, Amber doesn't care what the haters think. She says, quote, Paid rumors and paid campaigns on social media don't dictate casting decisions because they have no basis in reality. That's our last Oscar. I saw this. I saw this, I saw this Mike. Uh, the first thing I thought for Johnny Depp, yeah, yeah it's look, it's tough. I, I saw that he had he, they want him to leave and he has to leave that franchise. He has enough. What I'm really wondering about is Amber Heard's magic vagina. Her body count of men, a successful men, Elon Musk, Johnny Depp. What do you have to have to get those type of men? I want to know. Oh, wow. yeah. You'll go gay if uh, that's the... Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, she clearly yeah. has something that other women don't. Uh, all she does is, is find the most successful men in their field, and then she dates them. But you're being magic, vague, Oscar. Magic. Are you saying, do you want do you want to be with Amber Heard? No, no. Do you no, want to be with no, Elon no, no, Musk? No, no, no. I want to Elon Musk. <laughs> okay. Elon Musk. Thank you. Oscar's that's Oscar's take, everybody. Uh, Thank you, Oscar. Thank you. Uh, we will come back with the final audio vault. Uh, vault. Vault. <laughs> Vel- hey, Vel- you love the Vel- Yeah, you get the Vel- Doesn't matter to me, Vel- I don't know. I don't know. It is here. That's fine. Uh, we'll come back with more fun and the audio vault. Rob Spiewak right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Uh, brought to you by our bonus packages. Beware. The what? holidays are coming and there's nothing you can do about it. Get ready for Thanksgiving on the Lanai. The stuffing will be served out. Let's go. <laughs> this year, Santa is just going to drop your presents down the chimney. Sorry for that cracked iPad screen. Oh, oh, oh. You can kiss under the mistletoe as long as you kiss your ass goodbye. Yay. <laughs> I got a respirator for Hanukkah. Oh, no. On the eighth crazy night. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's not such a silent night with all that coughing. (laughs) And New Year's Day, more like New Fears Day. (laughs) Is that a champagne pop or deadly nasal droplets? Can you rely on anything this holiday season? No, you can't. You can depend. Yes, you can, Rob. You can depend on the TMOS bonus show. It will be there for you, and it's 100% safe to share. It makes a great gift for your palm reader, your fishmonger, that (laughs) obese spelunker, or even yourself. Right. Just go to MikeOmeraShow.com, click the bonus banner, and you're there. It's the best and funniest way to support TMOS, the bonus show. You'll never suffer with this stocking stuffer. (laughs) <laughs> Buy it at MikeOmeraShow.com. Thank you very much. Okay. And now open the audio vault for today, Friday the 13th. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh. And I'm glad you bring that up. I seldom get a request for the audio vault, but you know, Mike, what have I always said? All the way with Kiki K. Have I always oh, said yeah. this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, Kiki wanted to hear this remix of Rebecca Black for Friday the 13th, so I will favor her with it.
That's <laughs> enough of that. But anyway, we, we love to play your requests Thanks, here Kiki. at Boss Radio. Uh, mm-hmm. Mike, one thing that's kind of neat, with people still reeling from the passing of Eddie Van Halen, more and more archival tape is emerging. And someone found an audio recording of them in 1975 playing wow. a high school. And they're covering the song uh, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo. I think it's a Rick Derringer song. Keep in mind, Van Halen in 1975, Eddie is 20. And this is fun to listen to. Right here. Wait for the solo. You'll love it. Same thing. You can hear them. 45 years ago. Seventy-five. And what pisses me off, I think at my high school we got like Bob Brown's puppets. <laughs> this high school got Van Halen. But that's wow. cool. You can find that on YouTube. Um, there's cool. a new, you know, we know that Sam Jackson is a spokesperson for Capital One, but they released mm-hmm. their new Christmas commercial and uh, it opens with Santa Claus. But Santa Claus is John Travolta. So what we have here is a Pulp Fiction reunion. Oh, yes, for oh, elves, cool. check. Now just in the dang coupon code. Hold your reindeer, Santa. Sammy Wolf. What's up? I got a gift for you. Capital One Shopping instantly searches for available coupon codes and automatically applies them. Just download it to your computer. It's free. Whoa. Oh, I have that. Save me a bundle. You have that? Mm-hmm. What? So, that get me off your naughty list? Are you off the naughty words? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's fun to watch that. And it's great Santa makeup on John Travolta uh, because I was afraid they might leave him bald. But, no, they gave him Vincent. beautiful flowing hair. Yeah. Vincent Vega. <laughs> Vincent. Uh, good for him. I, I root for John Travolta. Tough life for that guy. Oscar, you run in smart circles. You actually have a large overlap in opinion with Dr. Fauci. What? Dr. Fauci yesterday said, yes, the vaccine is going to change things, but he's guardedly optimistic about it. Putting it to rest doesn't mean eradicating it. I doubt we're going to eradicate this. I think we need to plan that this is something we may need to maintain control over chronically. It may be something that becomes endemic that we have to just be careful about. Certainly, it's not going to be pandemic for a lot longer because I believe the vaccines are going to turn that around. So, yeah, he says it's going to change it, but things will not ever truly go back to normal. We need to remain safe you and know, guarded. If you needed any empirical evidence anyway mm-hmm. to listen to the scientists, remember how they were screaming about the fall? Well, look at the map. Look yeah. at the country right exactly. now. Look what we're going they through right it. now. They absolutely listen to called these it. people. I totally agree with them. We're going to have to be doing that. Mask might be a, a big part of things uh, for the rest of our lives. It might very well happen that way. But the pandemic will end, and that's right. good, and we can get back to normal. But I think when you're, when you're in massive crowds of people, uh, it, it'd probably be a good idea, you know. Well, you know, get a cold in the last. You know who's uh, really going to uh, hit Mike? Months? Orthodontist. Yeah, true. <laughs> That's true. Mm-hmm. Get your teeth straightened. Wear that mask. Stop your teeth straightener. There you go, Mike. Guys, a forty-five, a forty-five cent mask can save you eight thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Go for Meanwhile, it. in <laughs> Illinois, there's a fifty-one-year-old lady named Julie Loving, and she truly is loving because she carried the baby of her own daughter, which means this week she gave birth to her own grandchild. Wow. The first time that I mentioned it to my husband was when she had her first miscarriage. We were sitting one evening and I just said, you know, I would do that for her if she had a lot of struggles. Um, I would be her surrogate. But I never really thought it would actually come to that. But here we are. And I'm just really happy that I'm able to do this for her. And I think that's really sweet. But I had to also think, you know, I really loved my mother-in-law, but I don't know if I could have gone through with that. (laughs) (laughs) So true. But that's a very loving thing. Mm -hmm. It's a very loving thing to say. Modern technology, modern medicine. That's awesome that she was able to do that. And, uh, you know, it's the daughter's kid. 
Yeah, it is. Honest. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I hope they got all the paperwork in order. <laughs> and let's close with this, Mike. Let's close with this. You know, you think you got a perfect life, right? And right. You, you, you have, you're one of the most loved football players in the world, and you relocate mm-hmm. to Florida, and what happens? Hurricane Etta. Ooh. And Tom Brady loses his dock in two jet skis. The hurricane, that was a trip. I had a dock and it broke, floated away. I had these jet skis on. I saw those things sitting out in the middle of the bay. And I was going, wow, that's pretty surreal. And I just was kind of laughing. Like, well, you know, you get the jet skis back. A lot of people are dealing with a lot worse than that. We dragged them back. They were about 300 yards away at someone else's house. And I got a bunch of messages from people that were like, hey, man, are your jet skis? You know, they floated down and found their way into someone else's uh, dock. But just waking up and seeing kind of what happened to the yard, it got pretty messed up. And uh, be really nervous if a big one hit. So I was very lucky. But um, it happened pretty quick. I thought you had time to prepare for these things, but apparently yeah. you don't. No, it was really unfortunate. He expected Chris Godwin to catch his jet skis. <laughs> but it was incomplete. Here, yeah. Yeah. Here's what the problem was. This did develop quickly. They yeah. didn't think it was going to come uh, this close to the southwest coast, uh, and it, it caught a lot of people down here in Fort Myers Beach, a uh, lot of dock damage, a lot of flooding, a lot of property damage down here, and they, it happened. It happened like in the blink of an eye. You always have to be vigilant. They've been doing it. It brings home to me, living in South Florida, uh-huh. how great they are at giving us a little headway. Sure. Sometimes they can't. Sometimes they can't do it. What if Brady had a clock that gave him 40 seconds until the hurricane hit? <laughs> He'd be able to get out of there. He'd be able to do it then. That's your Magic Super Audio Vault, folks. Yes. Have a great weekend. <laughs> He'd throw his jet skis away. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect spot. Uh, anyway, hey, our thanks to Nick Loader, the singing yes. pilot. Nick, great, great guy. talking head today. Great chatting with you. Uh, what a great week we've had. And uh, more fun next week as we get closer to the holidays with a very special call from a very, very special journalist to the Butterball Turkey Hotline. Looking forward to doing that next week on the Mike O'Mara Show, even though Thanksgiving is going to be not next week, but the week after. Double. Am I right about we gotta that? Prepare. We prepare. Mike, yeah. every day is Thanksgiving on this show. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm preparing my stuffing already. Uh, I don't know Yum. what that means. Uh, for Oscar Santana, Rob Spulek, Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeOmeraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Thank God it's Friday! Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm Mo Green. It's done, Joan. They packed your things. They're loading your car. Well, bye. That was a hot mess inside a dumpster fire inside a train wreck.